else. The individuals residing at developmental centers are people and need to be treated as people and welcomed into the community for activities, living arrangements, programmatic activities, and so forth. He's always friendly, happy, just willing to do anything he can for you. We have a special award for him. He's from Troop 169. His name's Mike. Mike and I are here. think that you can sit in a, in a chair where I sit and expect the community to come in and just want to help you because you've got a lot of people out here who need help. Uh, I have uh, gotten myself involved in the, with uh, the community in a variety of ways uh, through United Way uh, with the Handicapped Scouting Awareness Committee so that we could develop uh, some things in the area of scouting. Uh, we have uh, worked very hard on developing some innovative volunteer service programs here, such as module sponsorship and our personal advocacy program, and getting groups like the JCs and um, uh, junior high schools, church groups, um, virtually anyone who expressed an interest in helping us, getting them involved with us with what we were doing. Now, as a parent who's down syndrome son has been in the church since he was two weeks old. I want him in the church service because he's learned to participate there. With the population that we have, the people who are going to be a part of the church in the community will be limited probably to those who are either in a home where the home or their home operator takes them, or they're in a home with a family that takes them. And many of the people we have still have no church background before they come here. We are 80% profoundly and severely retarded people now. Many of them not, not able to go out on their own to go to an assembly. So we go where they are. And Mr. Albright and I go in and we relate to them very personally. We have recorded music that we carry with us and we try to get their names into the songs and to the conveying of God's love to them. ecstatic physically and one evening uh, when we were there one of the staff was going to remove this one young man from our service because she thought he was disruptive and I had to say no bring him back he's singing but that in the way he's going to sing when he goes to a church in the community now here we are able to provide him that outlet that expression of his spirit and probably we're the only place that can do that today is it's my distinct privilege and honor uh, to introduce to all of our staff and our visitors governor of the state of ohio richard f celeste and i would like to have all of us give him a round of applause here to greet him at this time It is a very special joy for me to be able to um, join 
Superintendent Ken Gossett and the staff and residents here at Apple Creek in recognizing and honoring Mrs. Antoinette Smith as the mother of the year. In addition to your participation in your son Arthur's life, you have always shown a sincere interest in his friends at the center, and you serve as an active member of the Parents and Volunteers Association. Congratulations on being selected as Mother of the Year, and this is signed by Director Minnie F. Johnson, by Superintendent Kenneth D. Gossett, by the President of the Parents and Volunteers Association, James Gibbons, which is why he got the pleasure of escorting you up here, <laughs> and by Richard Celeste, your governor. Okay, thank you. Shake hands. Oh, with yeah. the governor. Nice to see you. <laughs> okay, right here. here it is. This is the governor <laughs> saying hello to you. Hi. Hi. Yeah. This is not my first yeah. visit yeah. to Apple Creek Developmental Center. What's your favorite thing? The first time I came to Apple Creek, it was in 1971. Is it painting? Uh huh. And that was a long, long time ago. Oh, God. Uh, the change which has taken place is almost impossible to believe. Uh, Joanne Seidels, who was one of the people who really got my attention as a freshman member of the legislature and the attention of our then governor, uh, Jack Gilligan. How about you want to shake hands with the governor? These are my kids. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Gibbons, who worked very closely with Joanne and others, here in the, in the community of concern for, for Apple Creek, I think probably did as much as any place in the state of Ohio to educate us about the need for change in, which we, in what we were doing in our uh, mental retardation facilities. I'm very proud of what has been achieved here. We want to officially make the announcement that the Apple Creek Developmental Center has been accredited for two years by the Accreditation Council for Services for the Mentally Retarded and Developmentally Disabled. It's a very significant milestone for us. Uh, we're, we're very excited about it and we're amazed at the fact that we were accredited for two years rather than, uh, than one. Uh, one year is the, uh, it seems to be the norm. Uh, two years is, uh, uh, we're, we're very proud of that. And I had a survey for my own protection the first year I was there. I, I got a total of 14 percent, right? Uh, 85, I think, at the time was passing. But I wanted to record it for posterity, what the odds were. A month after I left, I had scheduled another JCH accreditation. And I believe we got uh, 72 percent, 68 or 72 percent. So I had moved it a few points. And then the third one, took place about a year ago, I guess, right? And they, they made it. You're facing right now another threat to the security of the reforms here at Apple Creek. Mm -hmm. What is that threat? Well, there's a, they're going, the state is going to close another facility. They at this time do not say which one it is. And uh, I think everybody in the state of Ohio figures it's going to be theirs except this one, and I don't, can't believe that they would close Apple Creek in the changes that we have made. A lot of our parents are deeply concerned because their uncertainty of what's going to happen to their family member. As a parent, and the fear that I have when you speak of deinstitutionalization, as I look within my area, Summit County, and I've looked very hard, looked at everything available, there is nothing available to take care of a person like my son. So once again, I would be going right back into the jungle that we were in before to where it took years and years and years to finally get him settled in a place where he was cared for, adequately cared for. I bet I'm one of the best boosters of programs in this school that, of any parent here now because I think it's the greatest thing that happened. Uh, if we put our state money into something like this building and the other buildings, it is so foolish to take these kids out. 
they told me he'll never walk and never talk. He's walking and he's talking since he comes to Apple Creek. Apple Creek has been turned around. Not, no longer are we that place out on the hill that nobody wants to um, know about or think about. We're a part of the community. We aren't perfect. We don't try to pretend that we're perfect. There are always going to be problems in this kind of a setting. Uh, but I feel that Apple Creek is a front runner in comparison with a number of other facilities that I've been involved with and other facilities that I have seen. I, you know, I see myself as um, a person who, who came in here who had a job to do. It was similar to taking a baton on a relay team and having to run the last leg of, uh, you know, of a mile relay. Um, and I, you know, I feel good about the um, things that have occurred here over the past four years. What about future care for the mentally retarded in Ohio? I think that the back to the community kind of movement uh, is in the long range good for the mentally retarded because it makes them more visible. And I think uh, seeing their needs, people will respond to them. Apart from the human heartache, it is terrifically expensive to care lifelong for a mentally retarded person. This is one reason I think it important that parents and relatives of the mentally retarded should seek uh, genetic counseling uh, as, if appropriate, as to the cause of that retardation. What happens if Apple Creek closes? I would hate to see the plight of the residents here jeopardized after the place is just in the last three or four years, being run halfway decently and got some decent facilities here, why, why demolish it? It's, it's like your worst nightmare because we, we were among the people who said a lot of these people should get back out into the community. They should be visible, not only for themselves, but for the community. It's good for the community. And they've taken that as, uh, you know, this, ha-ha, we can get rid of Apple Creek. We don't have to spend all this money. And, you know, and just at a time when we finally have a setup there for kids like Mark, and I can tell you what that does to me. That makes me so happy after years of him lying in a bed and and, and being fed in his bed and never getting out of his bed, having his diapers stapled on him because they ran out of safety pins. Now he's in a setup with, like I say, th there's a swimming pool, there's a teacher, there's, she programs, and, and she's a dear person. She, you know, she says, oh, Mrs. Least, well, do you see how Mark takes the food off of his spoon today? She gets excited about that, and I get excited about it. But you put him in a nursing home, and he's going to be lost. And this, you know, this, nightmare is that I'm not going to be here. He's, he's younger than I am, you know. Traditionally parents die, you know, and he's got a normal lifespan. And who's going to care? I'm not going to be here. And, and who's going to, you know, is going to see that um, Mark's lost, you know. He's going to be totally lost.